quintessential Californian surf town, San Clemente is located in Orange County, midway between Los Angeles and San Diego. In addition to being a premier board riding destination, San Clemente also boasts a large number of surfboard manufacturers and it's recognized as the media capital of the surfing world. Not surprisingly, many renowned surfers have emerged from San Clemente or taken up long-term residence in the town. Among their number is this man, Mike Parsons. Mike's father was a keen recreational surfer and as a result, Parsons was introduced to the ocean at a very early age. I grew up in Southern California, right at the beach in a beautiful little community called Three Arch Bay, which is in South Laguna. And every summer, all summer, me and my friends would live in our trunks. I'd sleep in my trunks and basically uh, that, that's how I grew up. I grew up on the sand and uh, was introduced to surfing at six. And um, I really loved it and was attracted to the ocean from day one. And um, I really just grew from there. Parsons' natural affinity for the ocean, together with his strong competitive instinct, helped him to become a leading junior surfer. In 1984, he joined surfing's Pro Tour and went on to compete alongside the likes of Tom Curran, Mark Ocilupo and Kelly Slater. spent over a decade on the tour, reaching the top 10 and building a very respectable pro career. However, in 1996, he decided to move on. Parsons began pursuing a new challenge, big wave riding. He traveled the globe in search of the planet's most challenging waves, honing his skills at a series of locations that back then were virtually unknown. Once I get in the water, I like to ride a wave or two, get your confidence up. And, and once you're in the elements, that's the part I love about big wave surfing is you're just dealing with uh, managing your skill and there's absolutely no distraction. There can't be. You're just dealing with what's right in front of you and, um, and surviving. And that's, uh, that's where I think you're the least scared is when you're actually riding those big waves. In 2001, Parsons captured the attention of the global board riding community when he was among the first people to surf Cortez Bank, a sea mount situated 100 miles off the Californian coastline. He rode a 66-foot wave that day, the biggest in history. And I remember vividly just how long I dropped into that wave. It's, you know, a normal big wave takeoff is a, you know, a second or two or three, and it just felt like this, this drop never ended, and I was just felt like I was riding a mountain. And it was the first time I ever had that sensation of, oh my God, I just was holding on, and you sort of get that feeling in your spine when it's close to you, and just all those sensations, you're, you're, very, you're very alert and aware of your surroundings and what's happening, and um, I kicked out of that wave and was just so much adrenaline rushed through my body. It was one of those one of those feelings where you just go, did that really just happen? That was like, um, you know, something that once you get that feeling, you just chase it for the rest of your life. Parsons has since set a new world record, riding a wave in excess of 70 feet at Cortez Bank in 2008. Meanwhile, internet footage of his exploits at Jaws in Hawaii has become by far the world's most viewed surfing clip. Pushing the boundaries of big wave riding has taken its toll on the 46-year-old's body. He's had multiple knee surgeries, broken his nose, and required more stitches than he cares to remember. Basically, when you fall on one of those waves or you're caught inside, you're getting ripped from limb to limb. It feels like you're in a blender and you're getting just torn apart by Mother Nature. So the worst thing you can do is panic. It's all about trying to stay calm. So for me, I try to remember things earlier in my life, forget about the fact that, you know, I'm going to be underwater for 20 seconds right now and there's nothing I can do about it. So the best thing you can do is distract yourself, 
relax. And, um, you know, I know a lot of other guys try to do that too. Mike also bears the psychological scars of having witnessed two close friends die whilst pursuing their big wave dreams. Married with a young son, Parsons now has more than just himself to consider when confronting the might of the ocean. It's definitely changed my, my thinking in big waves. I mean, um, I rode the biggest wave of my life when my son now was, was uh, conceived. He, was, he wasn't born yet, and at the time I knew it when I was surfing those waves, and it was on my mind. But then again, I justify riding big waves still with the fact that I'm prepared and I know my limits and I do it pretty calculated. Um, but yeah, it's changed my mind. I want to surf waves with my son and, and uh, take him around the world and, and uh, geez, I'd hate to miss that. So, so it, it's on my mind. As one of the world's most respected wave riders, Mike's knowledge and abilities are in great demand. He acts as a marketing consultant for surf industry giant Billabong. He sits on the board of directors for Surfing America, and he's also a contest director for a number of world tour events. However, Parsons' principal focus remains big wave surfing. A couple of years ago, he obtained his pilot's license, which he puts to good use, flying himself and a select group of friends to big wave spots, and also scouring the coast for new locations that might raise the big wave bar even higher. I don't think we're there yet. We're measuring waves nowadays around 70 feet on the faces, and we've been at this game with toe surfing and exploring the world's biggest waves for maybe 10 years. I think we're gonna be well over 100 feet on the face of these waves. Um, it's just a matter of the right elements coming together. Articulate, astute, and unassuming, Mike Parsons' awe-inspiring big wave exploits and multifaceted surfing career mark him out as one of his sport's finest ambassadors.